artists. Last time I saw you, you saw me, we made paper beavers. Today we are going to create a lodge for that beaver to live in. Now this project, all you really need is paper and pencil. You can do the whole thing with paper and pencil because you would be drawing it. But I've actually designed this project to be something called multimedia, which means it uses a lot of materials that you can e have easily have at home. So paper and pencil, as well as, if you've got it, something to color with. You can use crayons, you can use markers. You will need these two colors mostly. You could also use green, but blue and brown. Um, you can use watercolors if you have a watercolor set. That's what I'm going to be using. My colors are really washing out today. I'm going to use watercolors. And uh, you'll also need something to make the lodge itself. So I am going to use, I'm really excited, I'm going to use twigs. I went outside and I found some twigs and I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit as I work. Um, uh, but you don't need to use real twigs if you don't want to go outside. You can instead use thin cardboard like a toilet paper roll or a cereal box or a dinner box. Anything like that will work. Ooh, this is great. Let's do that. Okay. And then you're also going to need glue if you are planning on making the lodge with twigs or with cardboard. You can use white glue, that's easiest, or you can use Mod Podge if you've got it. That's what I have. I don't own white glue because all of my art supplies are at school, so Mod Podge is one of the crafting tools I use at home. If you want to make your own Mod Podge, it's just white glue and water mixed together. You can find recipes all over the place. Glue sticks should work. Um, it won't work as well. In fact, if you have glue stick and tape, I would actually recommend the tape over the glue stick. So, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be making a Beaver Lodge cross section. I want your paper landscape. When I drew that arch with you, I lied and I said that this was called portrait, but side to side is called landscape. So. I'm going to, you should be using your pencil, but I'm going to use a marker so that you can see it really well. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw a line for the horizon. And I want my line to be right in the middle of my page. By the way, since I'm planning on using watercolors, I'm drawing on watercolor paper. So I have this line right across, that's the horizon. This line is going to be the top of my water. And so I want, um, to add my color now. that I've, I've got my line. There's, uh, It's a pretty fast process for this one. So again, I'm using watercolor. You don't have to. You can use, um, you can leave it white if you want. Diagrams are often white. Um, you can use colored pencil. You can use crayon. Um, but I thought that this project would be really cool with some watercolor. So this is the bottom for you guys, right? Nope, that's the top. Yes. Oh man, I'm so confused. No, that's the bottom. Oh, I never know what is going to work. So I probably should have got a bigger brush because I want to fill in this whole space. If you have a bigger brush, always use a bigger brush. And I've got this mistake from when I was confused, so I'm going to just blot it out. And this is actually going to be my sky, so I'm okay that it's light blue. That's the color of the sky, right? Okay, so I'm blotting out my mistake, and then I'm returning back down here to the water. I want my water to be blue, not because... Um, not because I need it to be blue for any specific thing about the project. This is just my choice. If you want your water to be teal, if you want it to be kind of a dirty color, um, if you want it to be, if you want it to be white because you're not planning on painting, you know, all of those things are fine. Um, but I like it to be blue. I'm going to add a little bit of green along the bottom though so that it can blend together. I think that would look nice. Okay, so here's my green on the bottom. Because beavers don't live in the ocean. They live in lakes and 
rivers and streams and they make ponds. You find them a lot in rivers and that's where they turn the river into their own beaver pond using dams and lodges. A lot of cool beaver cross sections include a dam and a lodge in the pictures to show you how they do their work. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to stick with the lodge. Okay, I've got my blue with my little tiny bit of green on the bottom. And it's not perfect, but this is really just a background anyway. So I'm okay with that. And I'm going to add a little bit of more blue in my sky. I want to, this sky is a lot lighter than the water since it's a sky. So I'm adding lots and lots of paint water to make sure it's nice and light. Ooh, that's pretty, isn't that? I'm so confused. This is the top. Oh, okay, I'll flip it over when I'm done painting. Okay. Now, one last thing. Beavers live not just in any kind of river, but they have to live in rivers where they have access to trees, forests. So, this is where you want to put in some trees. If you um, want to, oh gosh, draw in the trees, that would be cool. If you want to paint them in, um, what I'm doing since I'm using a paintbrush, I'm going left, right, left, right, and it makes it into this cool tree. My tree has a crazy top to it because the paper's still wet. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's a very simple tree, but that's all you need. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. If you want to spend more details, more time trying to figure out how to make your trees look better, you sure can. I always encourage and love to see hard work and perseverance. Slow down, you know, take your time. A lot of you have been bored and if you've been bored, art projects are a great way to slow down. I go fast so that those of you who are busy only need to watch what you need to see to know how to do the project. Okay, that's enough trees. I've got this crazy one that I don't really love, but that's okay. It'll still look good. I'm just going to make it taller. Okay, now I am ready for the next step. However, the next step needs my paper to be dry. So we are going to have a magic drying. Ready? It's the magic of YouTube. You guys will need to pause the video and dry it. Or if you're coloring, you won't have to pause. But ready? Magic. Look at that! The magic fixed my tree and it made it dry and it looks so great. Okay, so here is my beaver pond so far. Now this is not perfect. If you want your picture to look even better, you could have layers, you know, maybe you've got a little background showing, maybe there's some more trees. You can do it however you want. Spend as much time as you want, but I'm focusing on the lodge, so I'm satisfied with this for now. And I'm flipping it over so that it's right side up. There, that looks better, doesn't it? Okay, now let's talk about these twigs. What I did was I went outside and there's a big tree outside my apartment that drops all of these teeny tiny little twigs. This actually I think is like needles from a pine tree and they are dry and they're perfect and I picked them off of the ground and that's how I have so many. And it's super important that if you decide to use twigs, you pick them off the ground. Do not break them off of trees because what happens is, especially this time of year in springtime, the trees, I'm going to use this one that actually is a twig that fell off a tree, 
the trees are growing new branches and if you cut them off especially with your hands and snap them then the tree is going to have an exposed sore kind of like if you get a cut you can get an infection right because that cut if it's an open wound things can come inside of it and that's why you have got to cover it up with a band-aid you don't have a tree band-aid Trees need special kind of band-aids. They need special care. So if you want to use tree twigs, either find them on the ground, which is the best option, or ask a family member for help. Get knowing where and how and what to do. We're going to use these twigs though because beavers, of course, use logs. Now some of these are longer than others, so I will also be using my scissors to cut them. If you're not using real twigs, this is what you get to do. Find your cardboard. If it's a paper, if it's a toilet paper roll, cut it right down the middle so that you have a nice piece. If you're using a um, cereal box, that works too. And then I want you to take your scissors and just chop it. Cut very thin little pieces off of the cardboard. This is going to give you the same effect that those of us who are using twigs will be doing with the bonus that you don't have to go outside <laughs> and you don't have to worry about finding them and you don't have to worry about touching dirt or anything. So you would want to keep doing that until you have enough to make a beaver lodge. Now how many is enough is up to you. I'm not going to tell you a number because it really is up to you. Um, so if you need to go collect twigs or you need to go chop cardboard with your scissors, pause now and do that. Now that you have accomplished that, you're going to use your pencil to draw out the basic outline of our beaver lodge first. I'm going to use a pen so that you can see where it is, but I would like you to use a pencil. Somewhere along your page, it can go in the middle, it can go off to the side, I'm putting mine in the middle. You're going to start at that horizon line and make a big swooping curve up towards the middle of your page and then back down. Okay, it's a lot bigger than the trees because this is in the foreground and the trees are in the background. See how I made a big swoop and it doesn't have to be perfect because beavers aren't mathematicians. They're really smart though. I'm excited to talk to you about how smart they are. And then the beaver lodge itself goes below. So go below and make the line a little bit um, more steep. Okay. And now we've got this big kind of mountain shape that goes above and below the water. So the next thing that you're going to draw is the interior. So this is a cross section, meaning that if you actually went and saw beavers, this whole space would be covered by twigs. But since we're showing a cross section, we get to see what's the inside. And so I want you to draw another U shape, a smaller one, inside. So you've got, kind of looks like delicate arch actually. And then keep going with those legs down, down, down to the ground on both sides. You'll notice I kind of stop near the bottom. Um, you can go all the way to the bottom. You can make this have, have dirt, but this is the ground. So if you want to make it have dirt like that, you can draw a line. That's fine. But now you're going to have one more line coming down on the inside, but notice it does not go up. It starts at the middle and goes down and does not go up. So let's count them. On the top we have one, two, three, four lines. On the bottom we have one, two, three, four, five, six lines. Your beaver lodge should look like this at this point in time. Next, you can use your watercolors, you can use your markers, you can change it up, but we're going to put color on two parts. This is going to be the hollow part of a beaver lodge. What beavers do is they carefully build their lodge 
so that they can live inside of it. It is a house. It is not just a lump of sticks. So we are going to put brown over the places. Ooh, maybe I should have used a marker. We're going to put brown over the places that beavers live in. So beavers live in this middle section. Color that middle section first. You can color it again with anything you want. If you're just using pencil, if you're just using pencil, then that works well too. Just shade it, you know, one solid color of shading. And then also down in the middle legs. So not this outer leg, not the middle part, but the middle legs. Hopefully your paint is a lot thicker than mine. I got all of this blue paint and I forgot to get brown from my art room. By the way, I was about in, I think I was in fourth grade, when I read one of my very, very favorite chapter books that taught me about beaver lodges and made me love beavers. In fact, beavers are one of my favorite animals. That book is called Poppy and Rye. And because I love it so much and I want you all to love it and read it, I am going to put the link in the... Well, I'm going to put the name of the book and maybe a link in the YouTube video. You can find it when libraries open back up. Okay, I'm satisfied with this now. So now we get to cover the other parts of the lodge right here and right here with our twigs or whether they're from nature or whether they're from cardboard. So you want some of your twigs to overlap. You want some of them to go some direction, some of them to go others. What I'm going to do is work section by section. Now, if you're using white glue or you're using Mod Podge, you don't want to cover the entire lodge in glue at once. You need to make sure that you go section by section. Otherwise, your glue will dry and you won't have time to put the sticks down. If you are drawing, if you are drawing, what I want you to do is draw in a crisscross motion, little X's. Make them long, make them thin, make them fat, and fill in that space. Okay, so now I'm going to start putting down my twigs. These ones are really long, so I'm going to chop them. to get them the size I want. I'm going to push them down. This is going to be sticky. This is going to be a messy project. And if you're using um, if you're using real sticks, you might have to do multiple layers of glue. Okay, and that's all right. I will have to use multiple layers of glue for sure. Wah! Hot glue would also work. I think you guys, I don't know about Miss Hawking's crew, but I know Miss Mendesabel's crew made the, um, they made little creatures, not creatures, they made fossils with hot glue. If you have hot glue and your parents want to help you with this project, you could do that as well. So I'm putting down more glue because my sticks are overlapping. This is fun because I have never tried this before, so you get to watch me mess up. Now I will 
get to the point where I'm going to magically fast forward. But what I want you to see is that we're going to fill in this whole arch up, along, and all the way back down, and then fill in the inside too. And I want to talk to you about that actually before I fast forward. I'm going to keep working even though it's hard. Okay, so what beavers do is they make their lodges with two doors, a front door and a back door. And those front doors and back doors are the parts that we painted or colored brown already. This is the front door, this is the back door. That's hollow. And beavers enter from the bottom, they go and they come in through the door and then they come up, 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 up to here. This is why we're going to fill this spot also with sticks because this is their living space. Some beaver lodges are complicated enough that they also have nurseries for the babies to live in and dining rooms. But most beaver lodges, um, the, the kind of big huge beaver lodge would be the case if you had a lot of beavers who work together. Beavers live in social groups, um, familial social groups. So the cousin might live nearby and they all work together. And that kind of big giant lodge, you would only see that if there were a lot of beavers living in the area. Now beavers are able to build these lodges and live in them because the lakes and rivers that they live in are very still and calm. And they, that is not on accident. The beavers don't look around and say, okay, this lake looks calm, let's live here. No, they actually make it that way by making dams. Now a dam if you don't know what it is, you should, but if you don't, if you're confused, a dam is a wall that's built into the water. Think about, um, hmm, think about a bathtub. If you fill a bathtub with water, then it, the water isn't going to leave the bathtub, right? And if you're inside the bathtub and you put um, if you're inside the bathtub and it has started to fill up with water but it's not full yet and you put some I can't think of a wall you put a wall inside the bathtub then the water is going to stop when it hits the wall and this is really hard guys wow oh man this is going to take a lot of perseverance this beaver lodge i'm trying to make anyway um the it's going to fill only the area before the wall before it hits the wall and if the wall is low enough then it will start to spill over that wall. Now what beavers do is they go to a river that they want to turn into a pond and they create a dam or a wall in the river. The water's flowing, flowing, flowing through the river and then it hits the wall and it stops. And so what does it do? It gets bigger behind the wall and it fills until it makes a deeper um, lake. And lakes are calm and quiet and they don't rush and go fast like rivers do. And so once the beavers have created a calm lake, they're able to start making their beaver dam lodge. Okay, now I'm gonna start filling the inside even though my outside isn't done yet because I want my glue to dry so that I can go on top with more glue and do a second layer. Now I need to make my living space for my beavers. 
So beavers change the environment. Beavers are, are one of very few animals that do that. Humans do that. We're the animal that changes the environment the most. Termites do that. They create termite mounds, which other animals then use. Um, and a couple of other animals do that too. You know, birds make nests, woodpeckers break trees to make their homes inside of the trees. But when it comes to big changes, it's beavers and humans, man. They're making the most effect. Um, beavers have been known, just like humans, to sometimes ruin and damage permanently the ecosystem that other animals live in. So, all right, at this point, this video has gone on really long and you have this complicated project. By the way, next week I'm going to give you something very simple. So if you want to just spend, if you want to pause and work on this again next week, you can. But I'm going to pause the video and do some of my YouTube magic again. And now you can see how this lodge is going to form. And you'll see how it looks again after I magically finish. Hey again! So it's not done, but as you can see, my magic made a lot happen. I'm stopping, I'm jumping in to tell you that I figured out some really good strategies. And since this is my first time doing this, of course I couldn't tell you before. My first strategy, for those of us using white glue or Mod Podge, is that drizzling, and drizzling is even easier with the white glue bottle, is a great way to do this. Drizzle it directly on top of your sticks because the glue is going to drip around the stick and get it on the bottom. Now it, it's not perfect. Some won't get that drizzly effect that I'm talking about but it really works um, a lot better than trying to put the glue down and then put the stick on top. Now similarly, if you are using these little pieces of cardboard, this is way easier because they're not 3D. And so your house, your lodge will still build up and be 3D, but it's going to be easier for you to put the sticks on. So those of you who are watching this before you decide whether or not you want to go get sticks, keep in mind that sticks look really cool, twigs look really cool, but cardboard is going to be easier. Now what I wanted to say is once you've got a lot of chunks like this, play reverse Jenga. Get some tiny pieces, cut your twigs with your fingers or with scissors and slide them inside anywhere you can, just like you're playing Jenga, but in reverse. Now I got the video started right now because I'm about done putting my sticks in. There are still some white spaces where I can see the <coughs> world behind my beaver lodge, so it's not, it's not as perfect and as finished as it could be. However, I've gotten from the point of me saying, oh my gosh, this is so hard, it's never going to work, to looking like a beaver lodge and looking like the picture that I have hidden so that I can make sure I'm doing this right and teach you guys correctly. So I'm just going to put a couple of sticks down more so you can watch this method that I figured out that's way better. I'm snapping my sticks, making them really small and then I slide them, ooh, where should I slide them? Slide them in underneath some other sticks. And then once I just get a couple more down, I am going to YouTube Magic dry this. Now, um, glue dries slowly a lot slower than uh, watercolor and so I want you guys to keep that in mind 
once you're satisfied and you're just ready for it to dry and you've put in enough sticks and you don't want to keep going or maybe you ran out of sticks or whatever i'm happy set it aside Hello again put it by it's a, a new window. day uh, clean up you your tell. area and my because project finished drying this overnight will take a little while so and here it is. It Here's my finished beaver lodge with the twigs and everything. And of course, you don't have to make your beaver lodge like I did. You don't have to use real twigs. You don't have to make it in the same design. I'd love to see some creative things. Maybe someone has a flip open beaver lodge. But anyway, the way it would work is the beavers, this is the top of the water. They'd come under the water and then they would come through an entrance right here where the beaver lodge is um, built from the ground up. They come up to the center portion. They can rest on top of the big chunk of sticks that stop at the water's edge. And then they can leave through the other exit if they don't want to. So it's pretty cool since it's 3D. And um, I'm curious to see what you've done. Make sure you email in your artwork. And see you next time in art class. Bye-bye.